Hi, welcome back. Recently I've been working with uh, SharePoint a lot and also um, its version history features. On my newest video, we saw how we can create our own version history with SharePoint and so that we have that data and that uh, change information in Power Apps. But there's also another way because um, SharePoint has, as I said, its native uh, feature uh, version history where every change is saved. Today we're not going to see how we can bring that data into um, Power Apps. That's a video for another time. But we're going to see how we can bring that information into Power BI. Because maybe you want to report on the changes that have happened in your items in SharePoint. I hope you like the video. If you do so, please make sure that you give the thumbs up and also that you subscribe to the channel. Have fun. So as you can see here, we have our uh, usual SharePoint list with um, with a couple of items here, I have seven items. And what I want to achieve is I want to um, somehow extract the version history, the, the standard version version history, which SharePoint has as a feature um, from, from here and bring it into my Power BI report. So we can see here that, for example, item uh, with ID number seven, if we right click it, we have here the version history uh, option. Uh, if we select that, we can see that this item number seven has also seven um, versions no? when it was created and so on and so forth, all the changes that happened. So how can we bring this information into Power BI? Let's take a look. So as you can see, I have uh, already done it. So we can take a look on the um, final product and then we can walk through it together. So this will be uh, how it uh, will look like in, in Power BI. And I have already filtered on that last item. And you can see here that it has the seven versions with which is my item ID number seven. And here are the changes that have happened. Now as you can see here in the city, the um, this needs to be renamed. This was the number of students and subjects and teachers as well. So how we can do that? So let's take a look. Uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, start a new query and I'm going to connect to that SharePoint site. To do so, I'm going to select uh, Get Data, Online Services and, and choose SharePoint Online List. This is something you, I suppose, are already familiar with, but let's go through it together as well. So I'm going to copy um, from my SharePoint site my root URL only. No? So after sites, that's the URL of the root of your SharePoint site and I'm going to paste it here, click OK. So now the navigator is opening and it will provide me with the list of all my tables. So my table or my list is called um, schools. So I'm going to search for that. Schools and uh, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to click OK now and this will load the table in uh, Power Query. So as you can see, uh, Power BI went and extracted the, the source already and brought us to the navigation step. What I want to do here is I'm going to delete the navigation step because I want to land back on the uh, source where I see all the tables. Reason for that is because I want to select the items within the table when I expand it. I don't want for uh, Power BI doing it for me and expanding all the columns that are inside of my SharePoint list. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to filter on the title, which is my uh, schools um, list. And I will be keeping them only the title and the item. So I will delete this unique ID, which is like a GUID for the list. And now I'm going to expand these items. The only information that we need here is called something with parent. Let's search for it, parent, uh, parent web URL. So let's select that, click OK. And now as you can see, we have here our um, backslash, uh, sorry, sites project management. So from this string, we need only the project management part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click, or before I do that, I'm going to transform this, um, this column to a text column. And I'm going to right click and say split column by delimiter. Um, it's already uh, selecting the custom delimiter, uh, which is it found. And I'm going to say, I don't want each occurrence of the delimiter, otherwise I will have three uh, columns at the end, but I want the rightmost delimiter, which means um, this, this two will be split. I'm gonna select okay, 
Now I have this uh, sites part and the projects man project management, which is the name of my site. I'm going to delete this column because I don't need it. And I'm going to rename this into my SharePoint site name. So what I forgot here is if we see the expanded items, let's take a look here. I think I missed the ID. So let's bring that back because we need um, the ID of the item. So we can see here we have our IDs for item one to seven. So now that we have this, um, let's jump back to the last. So now that we have the ID of the item and the title is our SharePoint uh, list name, we have our SharePoint site name and let's name this into item ID. So now we have the three information that we need to uh, create our custom query. Uh, so that we can um, invoke that information for each row from SharePoint and bring it into our uh, Power Query. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it from here. So we can go in the advanced editor and I'm going to copy it, close that and I'm going to say uh, right click new query, blank query. And I'm going to call this uh, custom version history. And after you have created this blank query, you can go to the advanced editor and then paste that code in there. So then you will see these uh, options here for the parameters. But before we, we, we go into that, uh, let's, let's take a look on the code real quick. Because um, here what is happening is that we are reaching out to the source by sending the information as parameters. So we have here um, written these columns, these, these fields, and these are the ones that are going to get passed into that relative path, which is the URL uh, needed for um, doing the API call to that item to retrieve its version history. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, writing a parameter called SharePoint site, SharePoint list name and item ID. That's why you can see them here as well. These are the fields. And um, then I'm putting all this together into this relative path. So what you need to change here is only this part because this is then static, the SharePoint site uh, URL. And the next items which are being passed into this URL are then dynamic. So the SharePoint site, SharePoint list name, and uh, it's, it's making a text out of this item ID is being then um, dynamically uh, put into this relative path for each row in my Power Query. So at the end, uh, I'm going to paste this code also in, in the video description, so don't worry about that. Um, so at the end, you have these parameters here. So what we can do is then in our Power Query, uh, in our, sorry, in our table schools, we can say, uh, go to add a column and then invoke a custom function. So by doing that, we can call this here uh, version history. And you can then select that uh, function query that you want to invoke. In my case, is the custom version history. Uh, and now it is asking you for the parameters. What you can do here is you can uh, statically write a value, but it will not make any sense because in that way you will always have the same sort of result here. What we want to do is we can select this drop down and then dynamically pass the values over a, a column. So the item ID has already found uh, the column it uh, is going to use. The SharePoint site is going to use the SharePoint site name and the SharePoint list name is going to use the SharePoint list name column. So by clicking OK, this should uh, now bring a, a table for each row no? because each row has multiple versions. So that's why it's a table in each row. What you can do next is you can select here the expand um, table and then the only column that's inside is called properties. And that's also a table, but you can see now that we have much more rows. Why? Because 
item number. Um, let's filter this real quick just for, for having a better overview of the data. Let's take number um, seven, which is our item with ID number seven, as you can see here. Uh, let's make it bigger. So the item with ID number seven has, uh, if we go to version history, has seven versions. So what we can see here is, I don't know, can I zoom in here? I cannot. Um, what we can see here is that the item with ID number seven has seven versions, but we still don't see any data because as you can see, uh, each one of these rows uh, with the column property has a table in there. So then now we have to expand that table again. And here's where we can uh, pull the information that we want to see on that version history. So what you need here is, uh, of course, your columns. So I'm going to grab, uh, so the ID is already there, Shepard list name and Shepard site name is already there. Um, so what I want is the school name, in my case is the title. I want the city, uh, it should be somewhere here as well. There it is. Uh, I want the number of students. I want uh, subjects, teachers. I'm gonna select OK. And as you can see here, we have, we already see some of the changes, but I think I missed one part because what you want to uh, also see probably is when you click version history, you have also a number here. So this version number, it's helpful so that you know which one is the last version of your, um, yeah, of the version history of this item, because uh, you cannot, you know, you cannot uh, see that directly here. You don't know which one of these is the last one. So if we select this gear icon, we can edit that last step again. And we need also another column, uh, which is called O's, O's, hidden version. I don't know what OS means. Um, there is also a version history or a version, yeah, version ID. So don't use that because it's not the right one. I think it's even the same like item ID. I don't know why. But OS I, uh, hidden version is the version history number that you're looking for. As you can see, it removed everything else. Oh, God damn it. So let's do that again. So I don't want only that. I want also my title. I want also my um, city, number of students, subjects, teachers. Okay. So now we have a couple of tables again in each of our rows. And the O's hidden version is also a table. So if we expand that, we have here uh, two columns. One is called element text and one has this schema from Microsoft to retrieve that metadata. We don't need that one. We need only the element the, um, with column text. If we click OK, now we can see the versions, not the version number. Um, let's rename this to version number. And the title was our school name. So we have the city here, the city is uh, plain text. So I'm going to do that as well. And for some reason, the number of students is also in a table. So let's expand that. It has the same schema. So that element column and that one. So I'm going to use the element text column here just to extract the values. So these two, uh, let's ignore them for a while and let's take a look at our version history um, here. So we have the item ID number seven. That's that's something we saw because we selected it here and then we clicked version history. And this one we can ignore. The school name, which is which is a title, did not change. No, as we can see here, version one to seven, version one to version seven. Um, the school name did not change, but the city changed. So at the beginning, the city was called Stuttgart. Now you can see it here, and it remained the same for one, two, three, four versions because here the city did not change in the second version. In the third version, it did not change either. In the fifth version, it became Stuttgart Blah. Please ignore the text and <laughs> it's just for uh, understanding. So as you can see here, the fifth version has the Stuttgart Blah uh, text in the city column. And later in the sixth version, blah, blah, and then it remained on the seventh version as well. And that's something also you can see for the number of students. 
21,312. It remained from version 1 to version 3. And on the version 4, it became uh, 213,123, uh, as you can see here. And then it became even more on the last version. The tricky part now is to, um, to do that with, with uh, tables as well. So, for example, subjects. Uh, subjects in SharePoint is a multi-select um, choice field. Teachers is a multi-select people pick field. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, keep in mind that if you now extract subjects, you will see that it has an element here. And this is also a table. And now it was asking you about the text. So you can see the values, but it will now expand even more. So the seventh uh, version number no, now has, has this, um, these subjects. So it will expand the items into rows. So this is now where you need to take care of some data modeling topics. Now you might need to extract this information into another table and maybe create a one-to-many relationship with, with this uh, first table so that you can see um, how these subjects or the teachers or so on and so forth, these table type columns uh, have changed with each version. That's not very difficult. We're not going to take a look at that today. Uh, it's just about copy paste in this table and then uh, creating a relationship between them. Because you have the IDs, you have everything you need. Yes, so um, this is how you can bring your version history from SharePoint into Power BI. I hope you liked it. If you did so, please make sure that you um, give a thumbs up to the video and also that you subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you like, you can even activate the bell so that you get notified when I create a new, uh, yeah, new, when I create new content for you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Have fun. And um, yeah, catch you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.